The opening scene shows a student named Josh Ackman, who is quickly walking towards the university building. On his way, he sees a mysterious figure in a bike side mirror, but it vanishes when he takes a second glance. Although this alarms him briefly, he dismisses it and proceeds to the library by taking an elevator with an elderly man. Upon entering the library, Josh finds it strangely dim and deserted. He calls out for his friend, Douglas Ziegler, whom he was supposed to meet there, but there is no response, leaving him feeling anxious. Despite his unease, Josh cautiously explores the library. At one point, he is startled by the same old man's sudden appearance, causing him to drop some books from the shelf. As he picks up the books, the old man departs with his rusty book cart. Still searching for his friend, Josh witnesses unsettling events, such as flickering tube lights, books falling from shelves, and the old man's cart moving on its own. Curious, he approaches the cart, only to be confronted by a terrifying screaming face, which scares the life out of him. Just then, a creepy humanoid spirit with long fingers, grabs Josh's head, and drains the life force from his body. In the next scene, we are introduced to four university friends named Isabel, Stone, Tim and Maddie, who are having a few drinks in a packed bar. Everyone seems to be enjoying the moment except for Maddie, who is concerned about her computer geek boyfriend. Josh, because he has been away for a week. Sensing her worriness, Isabel suggests moving on from Josh, considering the time they spent apart outweighs their time together. Afterwards Tim, who harbors feelings for Maddie, offers to walk her home, but she kindly declines, as she considers him only as a friend. Upon arriving back at her apartment, Maddie listens to a couple of her voicemails, one from her mother and surprisingly, the other from Josh. However, the second message is empty, with Josh merely calling her name and hanging up. Concerned, Maddie tries calling him back, but he still does not answer the phone. That night, Maddie is unable to sleep, so she checks on her roommate, Isabel, only to discover that she is not home. It turns out that she is sleeping with a random guy at his place. As a result, Maddie texts Isabel, asking her to come back home. The following day, after attending college classes, Maddie decides to visit Josh's apartment to check on him. Once there, she knocks on the door but receives no response from inside. Eventually, she finds a spare key above the door, enabling her to get in. As soon as she enters, she discovers the apartment in complete disarray, with a computer code running. After a while, Josh walks out, but he appears to be different, not quite himself. Maddie asks where he had been, and why he hasn't been answering his phone. However, instead of answering back to her, he rolls up an ethernet cable and heads into a room, telling her to wait in the kitchen. While waiting, she finds Josh's pet cat, locked in a closet and dying from severe malnutrition. Distressed, Maddie rushes to ask Josh about what's going on, but to her complete shock, he has committed the unthinkable using the same cable. In the aftermath of this traumatic event, Maddie suffers mentally, so she seeks help from a psychiatrist. During one of her sessions, she breaks down, feeling responsible for not being able to prevent Josh's tragic fate. However, the psychiatrist offers reassurance, telling her that it's not her fault, and that Josh may have hidden his loneliness for a long time. Later that day, Maddie's friends try to console her by sending supportive messages in a group chat. But much to their surprise, they receive messages from Josh's account asking for help. The next day, the four friends meet on campus to discuss this strange occurrence. They then speculate that Josh's computer might still be on, and a virus is causing the messages. As a result, Stone decides to go to Josh's apartment and log off the computer. After classes, Stone goes to Josh's place and explores the eerie house. To his horror, he soon sees a pale lady emerging from the wall and advancing towards him. In a panicked state, Stone tries to hide under the bed, but the ghostly entity reaches him and drains his soul, just like what happened to Josh. The next day, Maddie calls Stone to inquire if he managed to turn off the computer. But as expected, the possessed Stone doesn't talk much on the phone. Disturbed by the situation, Maddie decides to take matters into her own hands and heads to Josh's apartment. However, she finds the place being cleaned out and vacant by the landlady. Maddie asks about the computer, and the landlady explains that she has already sold it, because Josh hadn't paid the rent for several months. Despite this, Maddie traces the computer's buyer, whose name is Dex McCarthy, and pays him a visit. She accuses him of using her boyfriend's computer to send strange messages. Confused, Dex shows her that he hasn't even connected the computer, 
leaving Maddie bewildered as she departs. In order to figure out what she was saying, Dex later plugs in the computer and discovers a series of peculiar videos. Among them, one video shows Josh taking a gun and tragically committing the unthinkable. Terrified, Dex calls Maddie and shows her the distressing footage, leaving her deeply unsettled. A few days later, while at college, Maddie receives a package sent by Josh two days prior to his death. Inside, she finds rolls of red tape and a message from Josh, saying that these tapes keep them out, adding to the mystery and confusion surrounding the events. As days pass by, Maddie begins to experience increasingly terrifying nightmares and visions of horrifying spirits. She also witnesses disturbing scenes of people committing the unthinkable right in front of her. These experiences lead her to believe that something evil is pursuing her. One day, she visits her psychiatrist, but even he dismisses her claims as hallucinations. Trying to accept this explanation, Maddie attempts to maintain her normal daily routine and attends college. However, she notices an unusual trend the university is gradually becoming emptier as students stop showing up. One day, while in the restroom, Maddie hears strange noises, so she goes to investigate. Suddenly, she catches a glimpse of someone peering through one of the bathroom doors, which frightens her, and she flees in panic. In the next scene, Tim decides to visit Stone, as he has been unresponsive to phone calls for several days. Upon entering his apartment, Tim finds him in a distressed state, tearfully saying I don't want to die. But before Tim can react, Stone is mysteriously pulled into and engulfed by the wall, leaving only a dark trace behind. This terrifies Tim. So he rushes back to his own place, and frantically covers the doors and windows with red tape. After covering everything, he looks through the door peephole, and at the same time, a humanoid figure with a large mouth suddenly attacks him. On the same night, Maddie's computer turns on by itself and starts playing some strange videos. Scared, she disconnects all the computer wires, but still the printer begins printing some images. Upon assembling the printed pieces, she sees a blurry face. Panicked, she goes to Dex's place to share her findings. In response, he shows her video messages that Josh had sent to Douglas. They also uncover that Josh had hacked into Douglas's computer computer system, and unintentionally unleashed a virus that opened a portal connecting the realms of the living and the dead. It is also revealed that Josh had coded a counter-program in order to solve this, and even intended to meet Douglas at the library, but he was captured by the entity before doing anything. Before long, Dex finds Josh's counter-program inside the PC case, cleverly hidden with red tape. Meanwhile, Isabel prepares to do her laundry when suddenly the lights start flickering. Soon, the washing machine's door mysteriously opens, and the clothes inside it tumble out. As she walks closer to investigate, she is horrified by the appearance of a spider-like creature that emerges out and drains the soul from her body. Later that night, Maddie returns home only to find her roommate, Isabel, infected by the evil entity. She quickly tries to call for help, but receives no response. Just then, Isabel disintegrates into ash particles, after warning Maddie that the entity will soon come for her as well. Frightened and desperate, Maddie contacts Dex, who promptly arrives to pick her up. Dex claims to have discovered Douglas's location, and together they head towards his place. Along the way, they witness the city in a state of apocalyptic chaos, with wrecked vehicles and terror prevailing everywhere. They also come across a family who advises them to seek refuge in an area with less technology, as the monsters are apparently emerging from computer systems. Nevertheless, Maddie and Dex are determined to shut down the entire system, and to put an end to the mayhem. Upon reaching Douglas's place, they find his room covered entirely in red tape. Moments later, Douglas comes out from a closet, and quickly seals the door with more red tape, fearing that the spirits might enter. The duo then demands to know what's going on, and Douglas reveals how everything began. He explains Josh and his involvement in a telecom project, during which they found frequencies that no one knew existed. They opened those frequencies and unintentionally allowed the spirits from another dimension to enter the world of the living. In addition, Douglas discloses that these spirits take away one's will to live, forcing people to kill themselves. After learning all of this, Maddie and Dex realize that in order to put a stop to all of this, they must install Josh's counter-program in the server computer which is located in the university building's basement. With this information in hand, Dex and Maddie make their way to the server room. However, upon arriving at the university, they are threatened by a menacing horde of creepy cyber entities. As they make their way to the basement through the halls, the spirits continue to follow them. Due to this, Dex holds on to the door, urging Maddie to enter the elevator. As she steps in, 
Dex tries to catch up, but two identical spirits block his path, forcing Maddie to proceed alone. Descending towards the basement, the power suddenly goes out, causing the elevator to stop. Nevertheless, Maddie manages to escape from the stalled elevator and enters the server room. Inside, she is confronted by one of the cyber spirits, which approaches her slowly. Moments later, she finds herself surrounded by numerous ghostly arms that seem poised to engulf her. It appears as if she is going to meet her doom. But right then, Dex arrives there and rescues her warning her not to look into the spirit's face. Following this, Dex proceeds to the main computer and installs the counter program. This causes the system to crash, banishing the spirits for the time being. Minutes later, the system reboots automatically and the spirits reappear, forcing Maddie and Dex to flee the city by car. They drive a considerable distance and then pull over to rest in the car. Not long after, they are awakened by a radio broadcast from the army, announcing the locations of several safe zones where there are no internet connections, cell phones, and televisions. But before they can react to the news, they are attacked by a four-armed humanoid entity. Despite this intense confrontation, Dex manages to start the car and drive to an area with minimal signal, leaving the spirit behind. Finally, the two make their way to a safe zone, and the movie ends with Maddie's voice over reflecting on their new reality. We can never go back. The cities are theirs. Our lives are different now. What was meant to connect us to one another instead connected us to unimaginable forces. The world we once knew is gone, but the will to live never dies. Not just for us, and not for them. So if this video is good then like the video and comment and subscribe the channel. See you soon in another video. Good day.